Hello viewers, welcome to my first ever YouTube video and in this video I'm going to give a de demonstration into my floor plan on Home Assistant as well demonstrate my honeycomb menu module that I've made which you can also download that I'll put in the description. As you can see everything's in the off state. When I first made this I actually made this about two years ago, a year and a half ago, primarily the model of the home which actually represents my home as it is. Um, I modelled it initially with Sweet Home 3D from memory, but then I done the finer details, cutouts and all that through 3D Max. Ooh, just recently I have been changing things around to make it less cluttered. This was actually starting to get a little too cluttered with all the buttons and um, icons everywhere. So what I've done now is either group things or make them selectable by um, just clicking the object itself. Let's start off with the lights and rooms. Here we got my family room, dining room, and just to simply turn on the light, we just click or tap. This was initially designed to work on tablets, so I can put it as a um, display panel. Um, simply put, it will just turn on that light and same as doing over here and I also added the outline to show the area and the light is actually on. I can remove that outline by a toggle that I've added over here and you don't see that outline anymore. I like to keep it on though just to, just in case it is on but I don't know because as you can see if I click on the information bar and that was my honeycomb menu module by the way I can change the values which will also reflect live. So if we do, let's say pink, you can see it um, blending in there. And the same with this one. We'll bring the brightness down. Don't think brightness has been um, configured properly at the moment. I think you actually have to change that a bit. So it looks like it's off, but it's not so I keep the outline just to make sure it's um make sure I know it's on. We can go back in, change it, bring it back to full, and it shows there. I think it will be easier to show you here because the um, info panel won't block it. Let's turn that one on, and as I change it, it also reflects into the um, the graphics there. We'll bring it down a bit and again it changes with it so that's pretty cool what I also like is that when I turn off the light it blends and bleeds through so it's not actually boxed in so to speak so if I turn that off you can see the outer areas have gone darker but it's not actually in that area that's obviously what lights do isn't it let's give a demonstration over here you can see it's ble bleeding through and kids bedroom so that was um, a little bit of a hacky CSS styling to um, accomplish that what I've also done is change the SVG so this is actually an SVG the background model is not an SVG that's a PNG but the SVG are these outlines all the outlines are the SVGs and they're clickable and I'm using HA floor plan which is actually quite powerful and actually recommend it so here if I turn on the TV it goes from the off state to the on state and it's highlighted in blue to show that I think this um, living room TV will be a bit better and clearer let's turn that on I also added a little bit of a light effect for that too, which I probably got a bit dramatic about, but I like it and um, it gives an indication that the TV's on. We'll turn this off for a second. Oh, that didn't turn off there. And you can see that also bleeds around the area. Now, I might quickly put something on and show you the next state. So if we go play from the beginning, I think you can hear that in the background. 
once Home Assistant's found out that it's playing something, it will show you. Okay, so now I've added a little bit of animation that it's pulsing when it's actually playing something. So it's got three different states that it'll um, show and represent. Up here you can see a camera that's actually a recording state. That's why that one's flashing where these other two, one here and one there, aren't flashing because they're currently not recording. But they will flash if they detect motion because that's when they'll start recording. Another example, we can click on this camera. Wait for it to load. I must say I'm not overly impressed with Home Assistant's cameras. Well, the HLS streams they use anyway. As you can see, you know, basic stuff. Turn on the backlight. And the other thing I also noticed, they have this delay in their um, video through their proxy. And you can see that that was actually instant, but it's the camera that's lagging Home Assistant's um, input. So turn that off. Now with this honeycomb menu, we got hold and click. And although this is probably redundant, I've only got two options on this item. Toggle and the information. And we can re-toggle. Actually, it's um, showing us recording now because the sort of lights turn on and off. So that was a good demonstration. Um, I think what I will do as well, I can show you is the motion sensor. So I'll go into the kitchen quickly. Hold on. And as you can see, well, the automation for the lights to turn on once it detects motion um, triggered, but you also see an outline of the um, area that detected motion as well. I've got one in the bedroom and toilet. Um, that was primarily to have the lights turn on automatically. I'm looking to invest to get more. But I also got the outside motion sensors. You can see the um, area there and an area there. And obviously when they detect motion, it will give that same effect. Uh, you can see um, the bedroom's triggered. Not sure why, because nothing's in there unless a cat triggered it. So, one other thing I've also done is starting to group area, um, entities as the space was getting cluttered. So I can now say in this area, I've got two lights, the fairy light and a floating candle light. And the floating candle light also gives the um, lighting effect as well. And it also outlines blue if either one of them is active based on the group properties. So we'll turn those off. And got the electric blankets, did a little bit of an animation, made a bit more alerting. So you, when you um, view it quickly, you can see if an electric blanket's on or not, which is clearly safety reasons and whatnot. We'll turn that off because I don't need that on. And we'll turn the kitchen light off now. Here we got, oh, up here we got my um, hanging plant, which I put some LEDs in. <coughs> Excuse me. And I, uh, yeah, also <laughs> done the effect light on that. I actually like this one because it actually reflects on the table as well, which is pretty cool and wasn't actually planned. It just um, worked out like that. Because if I go into it, I can click on the information, change the color, and it reflects everywhere. I thought that's actually a pretty cool effect. Now, along with this, I've added extra honeycomb menu buttons. This is a scene to change the scene. And this is my humidifier. So I turn on the humidifier and I give it a pulsating effect now to visually see that the humidifier is on as well. If I turn off the light, the light will be grayed out, but the humidifier effect, the pulsing effect will still stay on. Now down here we have my Roborock. This is, um, you know, basic stuff, start cleaning. But what I have done in the areas, which I actually had to um, hack around the code a bit, but um, we click here. We can select each area slash room and tell it to vacuum that area. So if I do, I will do the kitchen. 
and click on that. Don't know if you can hear that in the background, but the um, Robo Rocks gone off and cleaning the kitchen for me. And I can do that for any room. Each room's got a um, Robo Rock for it, or style vacuuming. Now, I think lastly, here we got my another group of um, lights and stuff that I have on a display shelf. But um, we also got my speakers around the house. I might cast something to all speakers. Actually, I'll sort of rub a rock because it's not glaring in the background. Return to dock. Objects, no tribute, blah, 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 vacuum. And that is not my code, so I'm not sure what's happened there. Let's go stop. Let's go home. No, someone's not liking that. Maybe it is my code. I don't know. Oh, well. Um, hey, Google. Dr. Roborock. I should have said vacuum. Here is some information hey, about how to connect to Roborock. Send Here's a summary from the website support.roborock.com. Send a vacuum to... Send what? Oh, my God. Send a vacuum to the base. Okay, docking the Roborock. There you go. Sometimes that is a real pain in the ass to work with Google. Okay, now that's on its way back to the docking station. It's not actually showing that it's doing it. Okay. Anyway. So now I will cast to all speakers. All of them changed off, but they're not playing anything at the moment. Let's put on one more road to cross, which is probably fitting considering DMX passed away the other day. And I've, as you can see on here, you can um, done a pulsating effect, shows um, that they're playing, active icon, and uh, changes the icon as well. So, all in all, I think um, that gives a good demonstration of what I've done with Home Assistant and the floor plan. And also, you got to get a little taste of my honeycomb menu module, which I made primarily for floor plans, just to remove clutter and have that kind of elegant way of controlling things by tapping. Thank you for watching my video and click subscribe or give a like and um, hopefully I can continue making more videos in the future. Thanks.